Are artificial intelligence tools invading our privacy? This is Common Sense Explains. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us. I am Lorena Taboas. We are talking about AI again because the viral success of ChatGPT has kickstarted a desperate competition in the tech industry to rush generative AI tools to the market, but its widespread use is now igniting privacy concerns across the world. Gerard Kelly is the head of our privacy program, and he's going to walk us through all these privacy implications. Hi, Gerard. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. So let's start with the basics. How do AI tools like ChatGPT, GPT-4 work? Well, ChatGPT, it's really short for Chat Generative Pre-trained Transformers, uh, which really means that it tries to predict the next word in a sentence based on all the data it's scraped and captured uh, on the internet. So uh, it's been uh, created by OpenAI, and it's really it's it's this artificial intelligence large language model and it interacts with users in a very conversational way, a very natural way that you talk to people um, to help answer general questions. So you just read through ChatGPT's privacy policy. What are the things that concern you the most? These tools, these generative AI tools and techniques, they are really remarkable, right? They have these benefits that can hopefully improve human productivity. They can solve problems that are really complex, um, but they also have some privacy issues. We went and read the privacy policies, the terms of use, all the other supplemental policies to see if they actually talk about the ways that they protect kids, they protect families, they protect folks, right, who are entering in potentially really sensitive information to help them solve some of these problems. We found that uh, ChatGPT, their policy, is not very transparent. They don't really talk about all the ways that they protect privacy. Um, for example, they do say that they don't sell users' data to third parties, but they don't really talk about all the other commercial uses or purposes that they could use the information that you're typing into these systems. Um, ChatGPT does say that they'll not use data that's submitted you know, through the interface, the questions you ask to improve their own models or to improve the intelligence of these systems, unless users explicitly opt in for that purpose, which is great. That's a great privacy protecting uh, you know, design, but they don't go further. They don't transparently say uh, that the, you know, the information that, you know, the, the questions we ask um, are not going to be used uh, potentially to exploit our, our, you know, that information down the road. And I think that's the biggest concern when it comes to privacy and these, these generative AI models, that these tools could really be a, a targeted form of persuasion that enables the manipulation of individual users with really extreme precision and accuracy um, based on the answers that we receive. So, for example, um, Microsoft integrated, you know, you know, the uh, chat GDP version, uh, you know, 4.0 into their, their Bing search engine. And when you ask a question, you receive results that have ads inside the answer. So immediately, you know that those answers are not objective. They're not independent. Those answers are meant to persuade you for a commercial purpose to possibly buy other goods or services. And so that gets to the, you know, the, the, the truthfulness of, of these systems. Even Meta came out recently with their own uh, generative tools uh, and talking about how they're going to use these to hyper uh, target folks with advertising and commercial purposes. So a lot of new, uh, you know, new and, and uh, you know, very diverse concerns we need to think about when it comes to kids and families. Right. So you read a lot of privacy policies, not just social media platforms, but now some of these other tools like BARD. How does this privacy policy of ChatGPT, GPT-4 differ not, not just from other social media platforms, but the other AI tools that are coming out? What we're seeing is, is we're seeing these different types of conversational AI models. Um, Microsoft's Google's uh, other other you know tools are all a little different. They're all going to provide you a little different answers, and they're all trying to persuade you in different ways. Um, so I think that's an important consideration that we need to think about uh, conversational you know AI models that are safe for privacy, that are not using the information that you're giving it, right? The sensitive questions that you're asking uh, to persuade you to make different choices or decisions uh, that you might not otherwise have made. But we look at Bing, for example, it's integration of ads directly into the answer. Uh, and we look at um, you know, Google's Bards, which is also trying to integrate with everything Google, right? Um, that it knows everything about you. Google's Bard uses Google's privacy policy. So all of the advertising and the marketing and the tracking and the profiling uh, that applies to Google applies to this, you know, the, the, this new uh, conversational uh, you know, experience as well. So that's how they differ a little bit, is that these models are, are meant to really use the information you give them, uh, you know, to really make money, to, to, to sell that data for profit. 
So ChatGPT has become the fastest growing consumer application ever launched. It has over 100 million active users right now. But why should those users be concerned about the safety of their data? Let me explain. Since its public release a few months ago, ChatGPT and its successor GPT-4 have become a global phenomenon. But concerns are emerging. A few weeks ago, ChatGPT experienced a bug. Users' billing information and chat history were seen by others on the platform. In response, regulators in Italy issued a temporary ban on ChatGPT due to privacy concerns. And now other European countries are talking about harsher measures. President Joe Biden also met with a Council of Science and Technology Advisors recently and called for bipartisan privacy legislation to limit personal data collection. Some of the biggest names in tech are also calling for a pause on the development of systems like ChatGPT, fearing its future implications. So I mentioned that ChatGPT has over 100 million users. It's probably going to continue to grow because people are really curious about its capabilities. What do you say to those users? How exactly can they protect themselves if they continue using this tool? Yeah, I would tell um, kids and families that these tools are a lot like search engines. All the information, the sensitive content, the, the, the photos you upload uh, to your social networks, all of that information is not private. It's all being used by these companies to make money off your data. Um, but this also you know, raises this bigger picture of what these systems should be. As we think about privacy protecting you know, systems, we think about you know, shows like Star Trek, right? Where we're interacting with these systems. It's not just, you know, we're not just typing it, you know, our, our into an input box a question, we're having a conversational dialogue. And I think that's the next step with these artificial intelligence systems. We're gonna be having full-blown conversations just like you would on the phone with you know, artificial intelligence uh, you know, bot. And they're gonna be providing really personalized, really sensitive, really private conversations and answers that you begin to trust these systems, right? Um, and so I think that you know, is gonna be the evolution and it won't stop there. It won't just be these conversational uh, you know, nature between like, like systems we have now, like, like Siri or, or, you know, or Google, where we're talking to these systems and they're providing really you know, you know, personalized answers. We're also gonna be interacting with these avatars in games. So kids and families are going to be interacting with different cartoon characters and games, and, and those are going to be supported by open AI systems or chat GTBT like systems that can have full conversations with you and, and going to, you know, kids are going to trust these characters uh, and what they say and, and, and follow them through these games. And we might even see futuristic, uh, you know, imaginary friends. Your best friend as a child is a open, you know, AI artificial intelligence system that knows everything about you, will always be there for you. And that's where I think the biggest risk to privacy comes in because, I mean, these could be tools of hyper-targeted persuasion because they know so much information about you, but their ultimate purpose is not to serve you. It's not to help you with your problems or answers. It's to make money off of your data and profit um, through that manipulation of the answers it provides. So I think we really need to think about how to make these systems safe, secure, but also think about privacy and that the information you should pro provide should always be off limits. We think about bigger policy considerations, uh, how policymakers can can regulate AI. I think we really need to consider, you know, whether the, the, this this commercial, this advertising nature of these systems should even be allowed, um, especially for kids and families. So there's a lot changing really quickly, as you mentioned before. ChatGPT is is this brand new tool. There's going to be many more tools like that, and it's going to evolve quickly. But I think, you know, we need to be aware of uh, how these systems are developing and evolving and make sure there's always a privacy protecting option, because right now, unfortunately, there's not. OK, you just really just freaked me out as a mom, even as like a human being. This is going to continue developing so fast. So we obviously have to have you on again once new developments occur. Thank you so much, Gerard, as always, for being with us. And thanks to all of you for tuning in. You can find our privacy rating and analysis on ChatGPT linked in our episode description. And don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Until next time. Gerard, you freaked me out at the end. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Did I, did I go to Black Mirror? I'm sorry. My son's best friend is going to be some like random avatar floating in my living room. <laughs>